We're on the road again. Follow us as we travel around the northeastern parts of the wheat belt area of Western Australia. We meet some amazing people with interesting stories and have a look at a bit of the history of the region. We stay in some amazing campsites. We go from freezing our backsides off to sweating the same backsides off in the heat. Then get sent packing as a wild storm approaches. We stumble across a private collection of artefacts and go to some amazing museums. And disaster strikes that almost finishes some of the group members' holidays before it starts. So come with us now as we ride the Wheat Belt Way. G'day folks, how are you going? And welcome back to my channel. Special g'day to you if you're the first time here. Um, in, uh, in this video, uh, we leave the comfort of the Westonia Caravan Park and we're heading over to Eaglestone Rock where we'll, we're going to uh, spend a couple of nights there. Well, so we thought, until disaster hit for a second time on this trip. Uh, but uh, after we leave Westonia, we uh, stop in at Meriden at the IGA and uh, replenish our stores, uh, go to the bakery and get some lunch, and, uh, and before we leave town, chop the fuel tanks up. But uh, we start with our happy travellers uh, arriving at Eaglestone, and uh, we didn't really do much and we just sort of sat around uh, enjoying the day and then had uh, dinner that night. The next day. Eaglestone Rock is about 20 kilometres from the town of Nangarin, on the edge of Lake Brown, a huge salt lake. While it doesn't look like it right now, sometimes there's water in the lake. And when there's water, it's usually used for water skiing, would you believe? And when there is water in the lake, it is several times saltier than the ocean. Salt Lake was a chunk of salt. Is that what they call rock salt? It's pretty clean looking salt. Well, I won't taste it though. 
whole lake full of it. Could have been your swimming pool, maybe. Dissolving in your hands. There are some places in WA where they uh, will actually mine lakes like this to get the salt off it. Um, natural lakes, that is. Unlike uh, up in the Pilbara, like in Dampier and that, where they will actually fill a, uh, an area like this with water and then let it evaporate, and then they'll come and mine the salt off the top. And then when it's, they've done that, they'll put more salt water back in it again and go through the whole process again. As you can tell, flies are very friendly. G'day folks, how are you going? It's another morning. I don't know what day we're up to. Um, we camped last night at uh, Eaglestone Rock, which is uh, maybe 20 kilometres or so outside of uh, Nungarran. And uh, amazing little campsite, I'll show that to you in a little bit. We're up here on the actual rock at the moment, and uh, this is the scenery we've got from up here. Huge salt lake. We've just been out walking on that, and uh, as we're walking along, it's starting to sink into the ground. So uh, that's a good reason why you don't drive your four wheel drives on salt lakes. And um, but uh, it's been a bit warm here. The flies are friendly as all buggery. But uh, I think we're going to get some thunderstorms later on. They're really starting to uh, to build up behind us. But uh, um, amazing campsite. As I said, we'll show you the campsite. And uh, there's Pat in the background. He's filming my uh, behind the scenes kind of videos. So. Um, yeah, I don't know what else I can tell you. It's uh, yeah, it's been pretty good. We uh, we're going to be going tomorrow to uh, the Nangaran Military Museum, and um, hopefully I've organised a, a bit of a, a talk with a the fellow there that owns it or runs it. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. That's probably going to be the highlight of this trip. Although there's been a few highlights on this trip, but just get a load of that view out there. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely. All right, talk to you soon. The rock is fairly easy to climb and you can walk the length of it. At different times of the year, there is an abundance of different types of flowers and wildlife. Quite often, you can see eagles perched on top of the rock, surveying the area. Did you get any rain? No. Well, that's a good thing. Going to get rain because you haven't had any yet. Yep.
Little did we know how true that was going to be. I called along the rock. The signs of change and the weather was all around us. And when we got back to camp after our little expedition, um, our phones started going off with uh, storm weather warnings. They were predicting a storm, storm coming through from um, Kalbarri in the north to Exmouth in the south, straight through where we are. And they were predicting winds in excess of 100 kilometres an hour. Now I've got people here in swags and rooftop tents and uh, they're not going to handle well with the, uh, the winds and uh, sitting under a tree, the branches coming out of a tree, it was too dangerous. So we decided that we we're going to uh, get out of here and head for a caravan park. There was no caravan park suitable uh, around us. So the closest one we had was to go back to Meriden to the caravan park there, 53 kilometres away. Who's the yeah. oldest bloke you know? So you've got a double bed, a double bed in a donga, <laughs> in a donga, and so that's for two of them. Yeah, and and what have you got for me, other two people? Oh, okay. Can we put a mattress on the floor in the donga? Yeah, because they've got black mattresses. So you, you've got a, you've got a, uh, a room. The other two can go in without an ensuite, without showers and towels. So you have to walk down a, uh, down to the thing. Apparently, there's a storm coming. We're packing up and we're moving. I've got a slight problem. I've got two doors to close. premature end to our um, holiday, our trip. We've just sort of heard of a huge storm that's coming our way and uh, we were going to spend another night here but uh, they're talking about perhaps uh, 110 kilometre hour in winds and with uh, rooftop tents and, and swags and a sail hanging off the side of the caravan uh, it's probably not the best for 110 kilometres. Uh, so uh, we've decided that we're going to bug out of here and we've got some space down at the uh, Meriden Caravan Park which is about 35 kilometres as a crow flies from here. So we're going to head there and uh, we'll see what part of the um, rest of this uh, trip that we can uh, recover uh, subject to what the weather's going to be like tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, I've got to get back to packing up. Little did we know, when we get to the caravan park, we're going to have more issues. So there's the good points of the caravan park, and overall it's not bad. Um, the reason we came into this caravan park is because on a uh, recent uh, road trip we did, the weather turned bad, so we've uh, come hide in the caravan park while the weather blows through. And uh, when I rung up to make the booking, I said to the person on the phone, I wanted a room for four people, and she said, we don't have it, okay, no worries, because they're booked, they're full, you know, everyone's doing a runner. I can understand that. <coughs> and then anyway, she worked out because uh, I said to her, I've got two adults and a child, and the child is three. And I'll show you a picture of the child. Um, and then two other adults that didn't mind sharing a bed, okay, because they're sisters. Um, so effectively I wanted a room for four people. Well, they couldn't do that. So we ended up getting a room that had a double bed for the um, family with the kid and then another room with a double bed for the two sisters. Um, and that's what we ended up going with, right? So we get here and we've got the two rooms here. Now, these are basic rooms, they're dongers. You don't expect a lot from a donger. Um, and as far as donger goes, they're not too bad, you know? Um, but when we opened the door and had a look, this is what we had. Let me 
get the key. Not that one. Right, so this is what we got. Now, my kids have already moved in here, so that's why it's already a mess. Okay, so we've got here, we've got here one room with a double bed. Then we go into another room, which has two single beds, perfect for the two girls. So I thought, went back up to the office and I said, well, we don't need the second room because this is what we wanted, a bed for two uh, adults and two kids. Then she said, oh, you can't do that because you've got the kid. And I said, well, the kid is a three-year-old. It is going to be sleeping between the adults, regardless of anything. Can't do it because we've booked the, uh, she's, we've already paid for it. Um, and they've booked the, uh, the cleaners to come and, um, and clean the room afterwards. Okay. And I wasn't going to argue about it. And I said, all right, fine, you know. I don't know where they're getting their cleaners from, but let's have a look around, okay? This is what was spotted within the first couple of minutes of the kids coming in here. I'm not sure how well you can see it. I'll get a close-up. But up there, through the crack in the, wire, in the wall, where the wall and the, the roof meet, it's a whole pile of dust coming in through there. All right? And, uh, you know, there's cobwebs hanging down from the roof here in a few places as well. All right? So cleaners have been booked. They're not doing a real good job. This room here had towels, but no soaps, no shampoos or anything like that, which you would normally get. Okay, let's go into room two. And we're staying here for two nights. Okay, so we come into here. Again, they've moved in, so it's a mess. All right, we've got the double bed. Okay, uh, we were told there were no en suites and I'd have to walk down, and that was fine. We've got no problem about that. So my daughter comes over here to open the window up. And down here on the floor, it's all sticky. When was the last time that was clean? And I'm just looking around, apart from some water stains, which you can, you can live with that. There's no, oh, there's a bit of a cobweb hanging down there. There's no real dust or anything coming out from the roof or anything. So this one's a bit cleaner. But, you know, I asked for a room for four people. And uh, to me, sorry, I think this is a bit of a rip-off because I didn't need the second room. So I'm not happy about that. Overall, the park, I am quite happy with the park. It's, it presents well and, um, and everything, you know, it's nice and neat. I mean, you, you've seen the toilets, you've seen everything else. Quite happy with all that. I just think getting us to pay for a second room that we didn't need was a bit much and when you talk about the cleaners well what are the job the cleaners doing this is obviously something that's been spilt on the floor down here and, and is still sitting there from maybe the last person who knows how far back but that's the negatives of what I've got so far Now when I rung up, I had asked for if they had any uh, family cabins and was told, no, nope, everything's booked out because people are all coming in, all that sort of thing, you know. Um, and what I'd booked was pretty much the last, they had, last thing they had available. Um, now when I walked around uh, doing some filming for uh, an, another video I'm going to do on the caravan park later on, uh, I noticed all the cabins there and they were all, no cars out from them, so they were all empty. Uh, and while we were there, it pretty much stayed the same. There was no, no one in them. So to me, they looked like they were, um, they were uh, not booked. So why we couldn't get one of them, I don't know. Anyway, rant over. Now, next week. Uh, next week, we're going to do a little bit of backtracking to go back towards where our uh, night camp was, that, or bush camp was, that we got kicked out of because of the storm. Do a little bit of filming in that area, and then we're going to go out and check out the town of Nangaran. Uh, and in particular, we're going to uh, have a look at a brief look at the Nangaran um, Military and Machinery Museum. 
Uh, now I do a full interview with the chairman of the place who gives us a little bit of a story on it and tells us all about it. Um, but that's going to be a separate video because that was a long uh, process and I'm just going to put a little snippet of it into next week's video if we see what uh, basically it was all about. Um, so if you don't want to miss that, hit the subscribe button down the bottom there and the bell next to it so that it will let you know when the video drops. Uh, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up because it helps the channel out, makes YouTube show my videos to, uh, to more people. But that's it for now, so until next time, happy travels. Thank you.